Hey everyone, this time we read Why Video Games Are Good for Your Soul by James Paul Gee. So this is the second book that I've read by James, and this one I don't like as much as the other. This is more of an academic book than the other one was. The other felt much more accessible to your average reader. This one, it, it just, it just doesn't really work too well for me. It, it reads like a collection of research papers that have kind of been jammed together into a book. I don't really like how repetitive it is because it kind of feels like I'm reading the same thing over and over again. Uh, it does use new examples, but even the new games that it uses, I'm not really sure where he's going with them from time to time. It just and this might just be me reading this, this might not be the, the right book for me to read or anything like that, but it just feels like I keep reading the same thing over and over again, and it doesn't feel like... it doesn't feel like he's advancing his argument from the previous book. At least that's what I got from reading this. So like the previous book, there's a lot of talk about how people learn and how video games can be used to help people learn. It's... I mean, it's fine. I, I agree with him in, in some aspects. There's less talk about morals and ethical choices in this book, and there's more talk about, you know, just getting people to look at video games in a different way and how they can be applied to a learning environment. Some of it I got a little bit lost on because I just don't it was a lot of the a lot of the things that I had already mentioned. I just don't really understand what he's talking about in some cases, and it kind of felt like I was getting lost a little bit while I was reading this. But this time we do go over like different genres and everything. Like I said, we're moving away from like the more moral choices and the much larger argument that he was talking about in the previous book. This one, it's, he uses a more, like a much larger variety of games, and some of them don't match up with what I think he's trying to get across, or the games that he pairs together don't really make a lot of sense to me. It's very strange when you read through this, because he compares Tetris with Castlevania Symphony, Symphony of the Night, sorry about that, and I, I can understand what he's talking about because it's he's talking a lot about pattern recognition and the way we kind of want to observe a pattern and then figure out a way to way to like unravel it and figure out what we need to do next and there's a lot of talk about problem solving in this but when you compare a puzzle game to a side-scrolling action game I I kind of get what he's talking about, but at the same time, I'm not really, I'm not really buying into the comparison. And if you if you uh, read his previous book or saw my video on the previous book, he talks about getting people to buy in, and that's my problem. I just don't buy into his argument in this book. It made more sense in the previous one, but this one is much shorter, and I think that's kind of a detriment to it. It just doesn't expand on the points that he's trying to make as much as at least I would like to. At least I would like it to. While reading this, I did have a few things that I would want to look up later on or see or just try to do more research on. I think that was one thing that the book did very well. Uh, but I wish that some of those answers had been in the book. I understand why he might have left them out because they probably don't fit with the narrative that he's that he's uh, laying out, or they don't fit with the arguments that he's making. These were just questions that I personally had, and they weren't... They probably aren't anything that, that needs to be in the book. They're just stuff that I would want to look into later, and it's mostly just looking up to see if there had been any research done on them. It's... It's strange reading this book now, because... While this was going on, this one was put out in 2005, and that was this was kind of in the thick of the whole uh, Grand Theft Auto kind of controversy and everything, when you had different people who felt the need to impose their morals on society running around and 
complaining about how video games were destroying children's lives and everything like that. And like a friend of mine mentioned on, uh, on James's previous book, this feels like a rebuttal to that. This feels like, you know, someone saying, no, video games aren't that bad, video games can't actually be good, and then him trying to lay out an argument on how to use video games to kind of do something better than, you know, just being for fun or something like that. It's a fun argument to kind of pick apart and talk about. I'm not totally sure I agree with James on everything, but it's it's very interesting to read something like this. So I think James lays out a nice argument in this book, and I think he tried to expand upon what what he had written in his previous book, but I, I just did not like this one at all. It was just way too academic for me, and I honestly could not really get into it as well as, you know, some of the other things that I've read. So anyway, that's gonna wrap it up, guys. Uh, please let me know what you think in the comments below. If you've got any opinions, or if you've read this book, definitely let me know. Uh, I'll see you guys later, and have a great day, everybody.